Hello and welcome to the OASIS User Basics course. This class is geared towards both document and tracer user types and will focus on the functionality of the historical calls interface in conjunction to the OASIS desktop client. This course will cover the full functionality of a document user level profile and will cover 50% of the functionality of a tracer user profile in the OASIS call recording software. To get things started, let's take a look at what this course will entail. We're in this course going to be taking a look at two pieces of software. The first piece of software that we're going to take a look at is the OASIS desktop client. The desktop client is a tool that you can use in real time to work with calls as they're taking place inside of your company. This little tool, among other things, allows you to start and stop the recording of your calls and to attach information to your recordings that can be beneficial later on for searching and call recording purposes. This desktop client does require either a CTI or real-time information stream from the PBX or a Vox connection via station tap. If you don't have a Vox connection or a CTI or real-time information stream associated with your extensions, the OASIS desktop client will not work. Specifically, SMDR environments do not lend themselves to the OASIS desktop client. Assuming that your PBX gives us the real-time information stream or that we're doing Vox, we'll take a look at what the functionality is of that OASIS desktop client. The second piece of software that we're going to be taking our time looking at is the OASIS Management Studio. The Management Studio is the true backbone interface of the OASIS system. And that's where you go to do 90% of the functionality that the OASIS has to offer. Among the topics that we're going to discuss in this session, first and foremost, how to search for calls. When it comes to call recording, being able to find the call you're looking for is probably 60 to 70% of the battle. Once you can find the recording that you want to listen to, everything else we'll do in this session is essentially just playing around with it. I'm going to show you how to organize those calls, make them easy to retrieve again in the future. I'm going to show you how to see some information about those recordings, probably most important in this section. I'm going to show you how to listen to the darn things. We thought that'd be pretty nice of us. Going to show you how to put an annotation on a call. Annotations just our fancy word for notes. So if you want to put some extra text-based commentary on a recording, you can do so. Here's where the customer confirms the sale. Here's where they give me the patient information, the medical condition, the credit card number. Whatever it is that you would want to mark on a recording with our annotations, you can put those little extra pieces of commentary on a call. And last but not least, among other topics that I'm going to show you to clear off the session, I'm going to talk about how to share a recording. Once that recording then is found, once you've listened to it, maybe put some extra notes on the call, this is the topic of how you can pass it over to other people that might want to give it a listen. Whether it's a colleague, a manager, or a supervisor, or even that customer on the outside world who wants to listen to the recording, who promises up and down that they never ordered a thousand widgets and wants to know why they got delivered on their doorstep. Well, once you find the recording, you can share it to him or her on the outside world. They can hear clear as day that they did order those, and thus you can go about business as usual. So those are the major topics that we'll be discussing in this basic user course. To get things started then, the first thing I want us to do is look at the software download page. That's going to be a nice springboard for discussion of all the topics we're going to discuss in this class. What I have in front of us is the software download page where you are going to get the OASIS software onto your computer, your PC, your laptop, whatever it is you use on a day-to-day -day basis inside of your organization. Now, this web address that we're looking at is going to be unique for every single system that's out there in the world. No need to jot down my URL because it's not going to do you a darn bit of good. Your administrator is going to provide you with a web link. When you type that web link into a URL, or when you click on the link that they might send you via email, you'll be presented with the exact same software download page that I'm looking at right here. You'll notice from this software download page, which will connect locally to your Oasis call recording server, that you have the option to download one of two pieces of software, or both if the situation should arise. If you click the button to the left, you'll be able to download the Oasis Management Studio. The button to the right, will give you the OASIS desktop client. Now this button on the right is the one that I really wanted to start off with, take a nice little nickel tour of the OASIS desktop client and what this tool is going to allow you to do while you're on the phone chatting away with your customers or your VIPs. So if you were to take the right pill and click on this little download link for the OASIS desktop client, what you would download 
is this little gizmo right here. This is the Oasis desktop client. Now, this is just a lightweight little piece of software that you can choose to deploy however you'd like. Again, mentioning it's dependent on an OAI or CTI, in other words, a real-time information stream from your phone switch, or a Vox connection to the phone switch in order for this little application to work. It will not work in SMDR integrations or any data stream that's not in real time. But assuming that is in place, this little desktop client can be deployed to your employees however you'd like. You can put it on 100% of employees' desktops. You can give it to 10% of your employees. You can give it to nobody. It's yours to do with as you will. But here are the things that it's going to allow all Oasis users to do. First and foremost, whenever I'm on the phone call, it's going to let me know very informatively. Currently, I have a call in progress. I am talking to this outside phone number right here. This is the caller ID information of the individual that I'm talking to. So just in case I forgot, it's going to let me know that I'm actively on a phone call. Where the real functionality comes in, you get this little button over here to the left. And if you have been granted permission, you can use this little button to start and stop the recording of your calls. Simply by clicking on the little microphone icon, your red dot, which indicates you're being recorded, will go to grayed out. That means that right now our call is not being recorded. If I click this little button again, it once again goes back to red, which just indicates that this call is once again being captured. So that little button is just used on the fly to start and stop the recording of your call at will. Now, if you are not allowed to use this button, which is permission driven, you're Joe and Jill taxpayer, you can click this button till your finger falls off. Nothing's going to happen. That dot simply stays red. Your calls are recorded for all time. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. If you have the functionality, that's when clicking on the button would start and stop the recording of your calls. On the opposite side of the coin, it's just something worth mentioning. Presidents, vice presidents, CEO types, they might be set up to not record by default. 99% of the time, their calls are not captured. But if you were getting ready to do an important phone interview or a conference call that you wanted to keep for your records, you could simply click this little button and start the recording of that conversation on this occasion. So this really can be used either side of the coin. Either I'm set to record by default, clicking it would stop the recording, or I'm set to not record, in which case clicking it would start the recording of my call. The next major thing that the desktop client will allow you to do is customize a button bank. This little button bank can be set up by individual to do whatever it is that you want it to do. The buttons have a whole multitude of functionality. Let me show you some of the ones that I have set up here just for silly little training and demo things in the past. And then we'll really dig into creating this button bank and making it do for you what you need it to do for your particular job role. With this button bank, the primary thing they're used for is to attach data to a recording. So in the example of my first buttons here, I have an upset customer button where if somebody were to get mean and nasty with me, I can click this little button and label that this conversation that I'm currently participating in had an upset customer on it. Sad but true one that I did for a school district not too long ago, it's a bomb threat button. So if anybody were to say, Eric, there's a bomb at Oasis, I can click this little button right here and label that this recording had a bomb threat on it. So when the chief of police comes in 20 minutes later, it's easy for me to find the recording for them. I can do a search based on the fact that I attached that information to the recording and quickly I can find the recording with the bomb threat for that chief of police. So that's the primary thing these buttons are used for, attaching little pieces of information to your recordings. Frankly, they can be anything that makes sense to your business model. Upset customer calls, calls with a demanded refund, a call where I made the sale. Whatever's important for you to label on your recordings, I can attach those little pieces of information. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at how to customize some of these buttons, and we'll come back to the other ones that I have down here on my display. When you are ready to start customizing some buttons, there is a little button down here in the lower left-hand corner, which allows you to customize those for your display. Now, as soon as you download the desktop client, none of these buttons are going to exist, so you get to create these for yourself. If you click on that little new icon, it will pop a box for you, and it's simply going to ask, all right, what do you want this button to do? And for all Oasis users who can have access to the desktop client, there are essentially four core things that these buttons can do for you. First and foremost, they can attach an account code. 
An account code is just a very standard field of information when it comes to telephone calls. Typically, account codes are 16 or less characters. So something like upset or bomb or refund, those are little pieces of information that I can attach to a call to quickly label that conversation. Because these are one of the most common button types that are used, uh, let's actually go with that theme here. Let's say I need a refund button. Okay, I'm going to label the button refund. Every time somebody demands a refund on the phone, which hopefully isn't too often, it would literally attach the word refund onto this recording. I go ahead and hit save. Now I've got myself a refund button. So if somebody says, Eric, I never ordered these thousand widgets, I can click the little refund button and label that on this particular recording, which would then be searchable at the end of the month, the quarter, the year. I could see how many calls came in with refunds. The additional things that these buttons can do for you. We also give you the ability right from this button bank to add an annotation. An annotation would be a more elaborate note if I wanted to add some more detailed information. Whereas an account code is typically labeled to 16 or less characters, an annotation can be as long as I want it to be. I could put a storybook on a recording if I really cared to do so. So I could say, here's where the customer ordered 1,000 widgets sent to 123 Fake Street in Omaha, Nebraska via expedited postage. It would prompt me with a field where I could type in as much text about that recording as I'd like to attach. That would then also be searchable criteria at the end of the call, so I could go in and find all those calls with expedited postage or that went to 123 Fake Street. Next option that can also be used, a nice little handy tool here, navigate to a web address. So if I want to, I can have it take me to a URL. Just like with my Google button down here that I had ahead of time. If somebody needs me to go to Google and do a quick search for them while I'm on the phone, I can simply click that button and it would take me directly to google.com. Or any other website that you might commonly use while you're on the phone. If there's a website where you type in credit card information, I can quickly get to that credit card information field. If there's a website where I can look up specs or FAQs, I can do quick searches for web addresses, pop those up, and be able to quickly and easily answer my customers' questions. And last but not least, you can also customize your own columns of information. Oftentimes, these are used to present little drop-down menus where you can choose from among several different things that you might commonly see on your recordings. In fact, I have one of these already pre-programmed, so let me show you what this might look like. These are traditionally set up by your administrator. Your administrator can create these little call columns and we can attach information unique to your business model. So here's one for a car dealership. If I click the little car type button, instead of immediately attaching information to a recording, I can prompt myself with a list of things that I might want to attach. Keep in mind this is for a car dealership, so what we did was customize all the different makes of cars that are out there. So if this person calls in about a Honda, I can label this particular recording about a Honda, hit OK, and now I've labeled that on the recording. The nice part is now I've consolidated these buttons. I don't need to have one for Jaguar and BMW and Toyota. I can just have one button that takes me to a drop down of all the different car makes that would be out there, and I can label the one that's appropriate. I can then have emails sent out. Send an email to the Jaguar specialist every time somebody calls in about a Jaguar. I can run searches on this later on. Find me all the calls where people were interested in a BMW or a Mercedes. This is now information attached to the recording that I can use for purposes later on. Those little drop down menus I've seen used a hundred different ways. In hospitality, here's somebody that needs an early check in, a late check in, champagne on arrival. Debt consolidation firms, here's a new client, somebody that's going to pay in full, somebody that needs an extension on their loan. Take those common call types, build them into a drop-down menu so that you can label those pieces of data on your recordings. At the end of the month, that's now searchable criteria. You can see how many new patients there were. You can see how many complaints there have been. All that's now beneficial information to you and your company. With the Talkument software, everybody has the ability to customize their own button bank. With the Tracer software, just want to mention, there is an option where you can deploy that button banks amongst users. So if you are the sales manager and you make a smoking button bank and you want everybody in the sales department to have those exact same buttons available to them, you can choose to deploy that button bank to those individuals. It would be then hard coded to their desktop client 
and with consistency and uniformity, they would all have the exact same buttons with which they could label information to recordings. You don't have to worry about spelling mistakes or things of that nature. Again, with Talkument, everybody customizes their own, and then you can set up ones that are specific to your department or to your needs. Last but not least then, with the desktop client, you also get this little ability where you can view your last recording. And this is the last universal feature of the desktop client for all Oasis users that have access to this little tool. The view last call button would immediately take you to the last recording that you had on your extension. So if something catastrophic were to happen and a user were to hang up on you before you could take down all the information, I could quickly click that button, take myself back to the last recording that was on my phone, and I could immediately be listening to that recording. So it's a nice way to quickly recall the last conversation that happened on my phone. There is a new enhancement that's also been added to version 7 and beyond, wherein not only can that view last call button take you to the last recording, but we can also have quick access to a last segment of your recordings. To access that feature, if you go to File Preferences, you can go to the very last tab on this screen and set up Instant Recall Options. And here you can add a whole bunch of instant recall options to take you to last segments or hour sections of your recordings. I currently have one already built into my display that will take me to all the calls that happened in my last hour. I could add another one still that would take me to all the calls that happened in the last 24 hours off of my extension. And I can set up as many of these shortcuts as I would like. Well, once I hit save, that is now an option for me down in my bottom toolbar. So while I'm on a call or after recording has taken place, I can right click, go to instant recall and bring up quickly the last one hour's worth of recordings, the last 24 hours worth of recordings or any segment of my audio that I might be interested in listening to quickly and easily. It'll simply go find all the calls that qualify that happened on my extension, bring those up to me in the manager studio interface where I can start working with those recordings. Among the other preferences that were available when we had that client displayed, I can also tell this tool how to behave for me. Now, these are all features that have been available in all previous versions of the software as well. But I can tell it how to behave on a new phone call. I can either immediately have it pop up onto my screen, I can have it do a toaster roll in the lower right hand corner, or I can have no immediate notification and just pull the application up in the event that I would need to use any of those buttons or I'd need to start and stop the recording of my call. For Tracer users, there's also an extra feature built into the desktop client that we'll talk about in the advanced Tracer user class called Coaching, where I can start an instant message session via the desktop client and I can interact with a manager or supervisor to help me through the recording. So if I don't know the answer to a tough question that might be getting asked, I can solicit the answer from a manager or supervisor by getting into a chat conversation, or what we call coaching. That person then can respond, I don't need to put the person on hold until I can go find the answer. I don't need to tell them I'll call them back once I can dig up the answer. I can instead get information directly from a manager or supervisor and they can help me through that conversation. Another little option that's helpful, you can set automatic login. So every time you boot your PC in the morning, you can have this application start up. You can have it immediately log you in so that you don't have to worry about launching the desktop client every day when you boot your PC. And instead, immediately when you get on your first conversation, that tool will lend itself to your conversation. You can attach information. You can start and stop the recording. You can use those features on even the very first recording of the day. So those are some additional features that are worth mention within the preferences area of this desktop client. Moving on then, the next application I wanted to introduce is called the Oasis Management Studio. And that really is the true backbone interface of Oasis Call Recording Solutions. If you then, from this download software page, click on the left button, you will install that Management Studio piece. The Management Studio piece is going to look like this here. First and foremost, it's going to ask you for a username and password combination. That username and password is also going to be sent to you by your systems administrator. Whoever's doing the behind the scenes programming of your system is going to set you up with access to the Oasis server and they're going to tell you what you get to do and maybe more importantly what you don't get to do with that Oasis solution. So once you type in the username and password that have been provided for you, go ahead and hit OK. That'll load up the Management Studio software and you'll be able to start playing around with your recordings. 
Now, this is the last interface that we're going to be taking a look at together in this session. This is what we call the major historical interface. And this is where you go to look for and listen to and work with those calls that have been captured in your software. Now, it is kind of a busy screen, so let me give you a quick breakdown of what we have here, and we can go about dissecting each of these sections in good detail as we proceed along. But up in the top right-hand corner, this is what we call your call record field. And this holds for you all of the calls that you have access to in the software, each one just represented by one line in this grid. Now, in my software, I have access to 21,000 and some change recordings. Those are the calls that I've been granted permission to. Some of my colleagues log in, they might have access to 100,000 calls. Others log in, they might have access to 200 calls. It really depends on the permissions that have been granted to you by your systems administrator. So if you don't have permission to listen to the president's calls, you can look for them day and night. You're not going to find them. This is only what you're allowed to do. The same holds true for a lot of the features that I'm about to show you. I'm set up as a grand Pumba. I have all functionality to use all the bells and whistles of the software. When you get back to your system, you might find that you can do 100% of what I show you. You might find you can do 60% or 20%. It really depends on how your administrator set you up in the software. So if you try to do something that I show you and find that you just can't do it, you might need to get together with your administrator and have him or her grant you that permission. It might have just been an oversight, forgot to click a checkbox and grant you that permission. It might have been very intentional. I will leave you to wage that war. Just realize that our profiles are very permission driven. You can do what you can do. You can't do what you can do. Uh, that being said, the next thing I'm going to show you here as we kind of navigate through this interface is this folder tree system. Now, this is where you go to look for and listen to and work with your recordings in the first place. Also where you can do some custom organization and storage of those calls to make them easy to find for you again in the future. It looks and feels very much like Microsoft Outlook. So those of you who are Outlook users, you're going to love us for the look and feel. Even if you don't use Outlook, you're still going to love us. It comes very natural. Next thing that we're going to take a look at is this visualization area here in the middle. This is where you go to look for and listen to the calls that have been recorded. So once you pull up a call of interest, here's where you can see that recording. This is also where your play controls are kept, as we'll see. And then the last piece of real estate here on the screen is our annotations field. Again, annotation is just our fancy word for notes, so there's where I can go to put extra commentary on a recording or review commentary that's been put on there by one of my colleagues. So all of that being said, let's get to it. Let's start searching for some recordings and navigating our way through the screen. Eric, you got 21,000 and some change recordings. How on earth are you ever going to find a call that might be of interest to you? There are a couple ways that we search for recordings in the software, and they are all contained underneath this Find button up in the top right-hand corner. So, if you click the little Find button, that will reveal for you the searching tools. Now, there are two primary ways that we search for calls inside of the software. The first one I'll draw your attention to is the basic search. The basic search, the easy search, both names are pretty befitting. Works very much like a Google search engine. You type in here something that you know, and it's going to help you search for those recordings. It can be quite literally anything. If I know a call went to extension 1037, I can plug that in, hit enter. It'll query all the 21,471 calls and find me all the ones that match that extension string. It could also be a phone number, 513-258-9134. That's actually my cell phone number. Let me run this one to show you it does something. If I plug in that string, run a search, it's going to find me from those 21,000 calls, the 57 instances that were to or from my cell phone number. And there they all are. You can notice there's a match in that number string of my cell phone. So quickly and easily by plugging it into that basic search, it queries those recordings and find me anything that matches the string that I typed in. It doesn't have to be a numeric string. It could also be text. Let's say I'm looking for calls from the outside name of more, or maybe, I'm looking for calls that had upset customer calls attached to them. I go ahead and type in that string that I might have attached with the buttons on my desktop client, hit enter, and it'll query those 21,000 calls, finding me the five instances of calls where I attached there was an upset customer on this call. So very quickly and easily, I can leverage that basic search to find particular calls of interest. 
Now, let me clear out that search, get us back to the 21,000 and change recordings we were looking at earlier. And let me show you another tool that I maybe even prefer. And that's our advanced find capability. I find that the majority of our customers enjoy the advanced find. It's a little more pinpoint accurate, as do my colleagues here at Oasis. This tends to be the preferred way to find calls inside of the organization. If you click the little advanced find button, what you'll pop is a searching grid. And you can use the searching grid to very specifically start looking for calls that would be of interest. Because typically if you're looking for a recording, you know something about that call. Or else you probably wouldn't be looking for it in the first place. Let me run a typical example for you. Let's say Greg comes over to my office, comes knocking on my door, and says, Eric, I need to find a call that happened last Friday afternoon on my extension. I typed in the person's email address when I sent the email, and it bounced back to me. I must have got something wrong. Based on that information that Greg was able to provide, I know a lot of things about the call that he's searching for. I know that it went to his extension. I know that it happened last Friday. I know that it happened sometime in the afternoon. On some occasions, he might remember the person he was talking to, their phone number, their name. I might know that I attached an account code to the recording, or that it was longer than five minutes, maybe shorter than an hour. All these are pieces of information that I can leverage to help me find that specific recording of interest. The different things that we can search against are all available in this field dropdown. And it's basically anything you'd ever know about a recording. The date, the time, the direction, the duration, the outside name, outside number, extension, agent that it went to, ACD group it was routed through. These are all things that I can use to my advantage. So I'm going to take those variables that Greg gave me and we're going to run a search. First thing I know about the call that we're looking for is it went to Greg's extension. And I just so happen to know that Greg's extension is 1004. He's been sitting at the same extension for quite a while. I'm sure he'll be there for a while longer. But if I ever forgot, condition statements can come in very handy. Any of those memory lapse moments. I can remember that his extension starts with a 100. I can remember that it ends with a 04. But for the life of me, I can never remember those other digits. Leverage what you know. Take those pieces that you can put into place. Very handy for things like phone numbers. I don't remember the area or the office code, but for some crazy reason, I remember the phone number ended in 2000. Okay, phone number ends in 2000. I can leverage that. In this case, though, I know his extension is exactly 1004. So I put together that condition. I click the little plus icon in the middle, and it kicks it over to the right. That now is a searchable criteria. In fact, to show you the nature of the beast, if I go ahead and execute the search right now, it's going to take me from 21,000 recordings down to just those calls that were to or from Greg's extension, which in this case was 509 calls. That's a whole lot of talking. So what we can continue to do is build upon that search. I can throw additional criteria. Let's say I also know that the call did happen last Friday. So I can click on this. Let's say last Friday was June 3rd. Now I've added that date over to my search, pop it over to the right, now I'm going to find the calls that went to his extension last Friday. Even more specifically, I can say in the afternoon, just to not leave us short here. The time on the recording was sometime equal to, was on or after, was on or before. You can again see these condition statements coming into play. It was sometime off, on or after, let's say 12 noon flat. That's all we could recall. Pop that over to the search as well. Now, I have no idea what this is going to warrant for us, but if we go ahead and execute the search, we will find all the calls that went to Greg's extension last Friday afternoon. We're down to six recordings. There are the six calls that went to Greg's extension last Friday afternoon. If I want to listen to one of them, it must be one of these right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that call that was 41 minutes and 37 seconds long. That's the one we're dying to listen to. I can click on that call. It loads down below. I can now start working with that recording. So we're essentially building a fishing net. We're taking those pieces of the search that we know, building a net and running the calls through it. Everything that matches will stay there in the net for us. Everything else just kind of flows back into the river of calls. It knows we're not interested in listening to those recordings, so it doesn't bother to present those to us. A couple other neat little fine points of this advanced search. You might have noticed that as I throw variables over to the right, they always build on an AND logic. That can be toggled for some searches. 
let's say somebody comes in and says, I know I was talking to either Bob or Betty last week, somebody whose name began with a B. I can put that into my search. The extension was exactly 1004, Bob's extension, or 1005, Betty's extension. By highlighting any criteria, I can click this toggle button to the left of delete, and it would simply kick that AND statement to an OR statement, giving me broader flexibility. So I can say things like, I know I went to either this extension or that extension, and it happened last Friday afternoon. I can now build those as components of my search. That toggle just kicks the AND statement to an OR statement. If you want to get back to all the recordings that were in the folder prior to starting your search, you just click the X button up in the top right, it gets you back to that core folder, and now we're back to where we started from. So those are the two core ways that you can search for calls inside of the software. Either leverage that basic googly or search engine sort of search, or you can click the advanced search and you can pop open all those individual search criteria that can really get granular and take you down to those recordings of interest. Now that we've taken a look at how to search for recordings, the next thing I want to show you is how we're going to find those calls in the first place and how we can greater organize those calls. And that takes us over to this folder tree system to the left. The folder tree system is going to look the same for all users of the software, but it's going to function based on your username and password. So as you can see up at the top, I'm logged in as user Eric. When I get into my folder tree system, it looks how I left it last, but it's going to look very similar on initial login to everybody else. Just like with Microsoft Outlook, how everybody has an inbox and a sent box and a spam folder, you're all going to have the same folders by default on your first login. They're broken into two core areas. You get my folders and you get folders shared to me. Now the ones we're going to focus on for the time being are the my folders, because these are the ones you're going to live in 98% of the time. Taking them from top to bottom, the first that everyone will get is calls I shared and also calls shared to me. Now these behave a lot like Microsoft Outlook does. Just like in Outlook, how you can get an email and forward it over to somebody else if you want to bring it to their attention, the same sort of functionality works in our system, except we're talking recordings. So in Outlook, I can get an important email or a funny picture or a funny joke, forward it over to somebody's account, and it's thus brought to their attention. It appears in their inbox, they can read the important email, they can see the funny picture, read the funny joke. Well, with our software, if I get a call that's going to be important for that person to listen to, I forward it over to his or her profile. It's once again brought to their attention where they can then review and work with that recording. To execute the share, we'll be talking about that in greater detail at the very end of this training class. However, these folders relate to that sharing process. Calls I shared is the equivalent of my sent box. These are the calls that I've passed on to other people inside of the organization for their review. Calls shared to me, on the other hand, are the calls that have been sent my direction. These are the calls that others brought to my attention so that I could listen to and work with those recordings. I'm all caught up on calls that have been shared to me, but if I weren't, there'd be a little one ticker in this box indicating that there was a new call shared in my direction. At that point, I'd click in the folder, I would see any new contributions, and I could start working with those calls that have been brought to my attention. The next two folders are essentially your central hub folders. This is where you're going to go to find your recordings in the first place, nine times out of ten. The My Calls folder are all the recordings associated with your extension, those calls that have happened to or from your profile. It's a quick springboard into your own personal discussions because oftentimes you'll want to go back and listen to your own calls. What time was the meeting? What was the phone number? What was the email address? Quick access to your own personal recordings. All Calls I Can View, on the other hand, is your central hub. This is your best home base. These are all of the recordings that you have been granted access to in the software, whether it's your own, the group that you supervise, or everybody inside of the organization, depending on how the administrators configured your profile. So if you go searching for any recording other than your own, you would want to start that pursuit in the All Calls I Can View folder. The last two folders that you see on the display are two that you get to customize. These are where you get to make the system look and feel like you want it to look and feel. Tackle them one at a time because they're worthy of that attention. The call folder is essentially your drag and drop folder. So here's where you can personally store some calls that are going to be important to you. Very befitting, I have one of these folders that's called my important folder. 
Simple-Minded Organization for a Simple-Minded Fellow. Anytime there's a call that's important to me, I simply drag and drop it, stick it in my important folder, and there they reside. If I ever need to go back and work with any of those recordings, I know I have quick and easy access to those calls. But this can be any number of folders that you would like. Some of my colleagues have 30, 40 of these things. You right click, you choose new folder, and you get the option to name this folder whatever you'd like, whatever your personal organization needs might be. Maybe we can call this one Upset Customer Calls. So anytime somebody calls in and they're pretty upset, I can simply drag and drop those calls and stick them into that folder. Let's go to all calls I can view here and let's find a call. This one's 39 seconds long. Here's somebody that was kind of mean. They want to be one of those upset customer calls, as do the 732 second call. Drag and drop it. Now at the end of the month when the boss comes around, hey Eric, how many upset customer calls did we have? I can quickly and easily find those recordings for them. Yeah, there you go. There's one that's 39 seconds. Here's another that's 7 minutes and 32 seconds long. Boss, if you want to listen to them, have at it. So it's just quick and easy drag and drop method where I can personally store calls of particular interest to me. Use that for whatever purpose you would desire. Be on the lookout for excellent customer service examples. Terrible customer service examples, both of which you might use for training purposes. I saw a sales guy who had a callback Monday folder. Every time somebody told him to call back Monday, he dragged and dropped that call into the folder. First thing Monday morning, he knew exactly what he was going to do. He went down that entire folder and called every single person back. Whatever it is that would fit your needs, you can drag and drop and organize those calls into those respective folders. Worth mention on these drag and drop folders before we proceed. When you do drag and drop a recording from any central storage folder, you're simply making a copy of that link you're not moving the entire recording to a specific folder. So if I don't remember what folder I dragged and dropped a call to, I can always find it in my central base folders. But if I do remember where I dragged and dropped the call, it's quick and easy for me to recall that recording and I can start listening to it. So that's the drag and drop technology, simply making copies of those reference links to quickly point you back to the recordings of interest. The other flavor that everyone can customize are what we call call search folders. Now what call search folders do is they harness all that searching capability we started off looking at and put it in a folder format. Reason being, if you find yourself running the same searches over and over and over again, this can just save you the time and effort that it takes to set up those searches and quickly have those calls accessible. For example, I've got a folder, it's my VIP customer folder. I click on that folder, it quickly takes me back to all those recordings that are to or from my cell phone number. And this is a dynamic search. So every time I click the folder, it's going to rerun whatever parameters I've coded to the folder, and it's going to find me all of the calls up to that moment that match that condition. If you want to create some of these search folders for yourself, you right click on call search folder, and you once again get the option to create a new folder. This one's going to behave a little bit different though. When you choose new folder, it's going to ask you, all right, what type of search would you like? And you can either leverage that basic search capability or what more commonly is done, you can set up an advanced search and you get that pretty familiar looking grid. And here you can start picking on any of those specific things that we were searching for about a recording of earlier. So for example, I might want to make myself a search folder for Greg's extension. And I would code this folder to always find me the calls that went to or from a specific extension inside of the company. How about we make it 1004 again? Pop that over to the search, and now I've quickly got access to all the calls that were to or from Greg's extension. Go ahead and hit OK, and I can find those 509 recordings again very easily. I could have as many of these folders as I want. One for Greg's extension, and Steve, and Tyler, and Betty, and Kimmy, and Jill, and Becky, and quickly and easily get back to any of those individuals' recordings that I might ever want to listen to. But keep in mind that these are very flexible. I could do the exact same thing for those bomb threats that we looked at earlier, attaching via that desktop client. I can set myself up a little bomb threat folder, and any time one of my employees attaches bomb threat into that account code field that we looked at earlier, let's be monitoring for the word bomb here, pop that over to the search, go ahead and hit OK, I can quickly and easily go back and find all the recordings that had bomb threats attached to them. So anything that's going to be of interest to you, I can now do quick searches and recall those recordings very quickly and easily. So that's our folder tree system 
those are the core functionalities that all users are going to get in terms of navigating and working with the recordings that they've been granted access to. Now, I'm going to try to find us a recording here that had some general excitement to it, and we'll play with this call here that's 5 minutes and 36 seconds long. First one that I drew out of the hat, but it'll be a perfect example for us. So this call was 5 minutes and 36 seconds long, and it happened from a particular inbound caller earlier today. When I click on that recording, it will load that conversation down below for me in this visualization panel, the next area I wanted us to explore. Now, if I click on a different recording, it will load that call for me down below. If I come back to this call, it's 5 minutes and 36 seconds, it will once again load that call for me down below. So whatever's highlighted in the grid, typically after doing some sort of a search, is the call that you're going to be able to explore. Now, this little middle area gives us a few things. First and foremost, it gives us a couple timelines of the recording. One, we get what I call the history book timeline, a little drop-down events showing you what happened over the course of this conversation, which extensions it went to, where account codes might have been attached, ACD agents, and things of that nature. And then we also get a more broken timeline, I call it the easy to digest timeline, where we can see in better detail exactly what happened during the life of this call. So, let me show you quickly that this recording went to a few different extensions. It came into our automated attendant, said thank you for calling Oasis, if you know your party, please dial it now. Transferred over to our support queue where it rang for about three or four seconds, and then it was transferred to Carl who spoke for the remainder of this conversation. That was the life of this call. I can see from cradle to grave exactly what that caller experienced. It can be rather insightful. If you get the caller that says, Eric, I was transferred 14 times and put on hold for two hours and nobody ever answered my questions, I can tell you very quickly and easily that that didn't happen on this call. This call went to one individual. That individual spoke for the entirety of the call. It was never put on hold because I don't see those little hold color indicators. And that person spoke until that call ended. While visually that can be interesting, where the real capability of this section comes in is with our play controls. So assuming we want to listen to this recording, because that's what we're really good at, the play controls are all right here embedded. Standard media player stuff. Nothing too fancy schmancy. If you've ever used an iPod or a VCR or a Betamax, these are the same controls we've been using for decades. The play icon will start the playback of this recording. The mentionable here is that it's going to play back through whatever the output is of your computer. So if you got speakers plugged in, it's playing through your speakers. If you got earbuds plugged in, it's playing through your earbuds. If you got a Bluetooth, it's playing through your Bluetooth. However you listen to an MP3 or a YouTube video is exactly how you're going to listen to our recordings, through that default audio output of your computer. Play times two gets you through the call in half the time. Sounds like Alvin, Simon, and Theodore are doing the talking, but you can still hear very intelligibly what took place on the conversation and do it in less time. Stop, rewind, fast forward, jump to the beginning. All your standard media player controls allow you to navigate through the recording. My preferred way to rewind and fast forward is to simply grab this little cursor and take it where you wanted to go. So if we wanted to listen to the 2 minute and 30 second mark of this conversation, we could drag it right there, hit play, and start listening to that section of the recording. The little crooked arrow here skips over held sections, so if you don't want to listen to the lovely elevator music, you would just assume get back to real humans doing the talking on the call if this call had been placed on hold. Click the crooked arrow, it'll skip over that elevator music the whole time, get you back to real humans doing the talking. And then last but not least, there's a volume control. So you can control the volume of the playback as well, all the media player controls that you need to totally control the playback of the audio. So thus far, We've been able to search for a recording, we can store it and organize it, we can view it, and we can listen to it. All of that what I would consider the core functionality of the OASIS system. But now I want to take a look at a couple extra bells and whistles. Let's say at the 2 minute and 30 second mark of this conversation, something phenomenal happens. And we want to note this on Carl's recording. That brings me down here to this little annotation section. Again, annotation is just our fancy word for notes. So right here at the 2 minute and 30 second mark, I might want to put a note on the call that says excellent customer service. And I can do that one of two ways. I can either click this add button over on the right, or I can click this little pen and paper icon. It really doesn't matter which one I press because they both do the exact same thing, whichever one my cursor happens to be closer to. In this case, I'll go ahead and click the little add button down here in the lower right, and it pops up what looks like an email template. 
Now I can type anything on this recording that I would like. Right here is where there was some excellent customer service. If I want to, I can even add some text. Hey Carl, great job at the 2 minute 30 second mark. Come to my office and get a gummy worm whenever you have the chance. Go ahead and hit save. And now I've put a note on this recording. There it is, a note from Eric, says excellent customer service. If I want to read the gobbledygook, I can click down and it would expand that text out below and I could read what happened on that recording. A very good mentionable, those annotations are also searchable criteria. So I can now do a search and find this recording again based on the author, the date it was created, the subject or the text. Find me all the calls with gummy worm in the text. It can quickly and easily find those recordings for me again. So now I've marked a little moment in this recording. That's one of the great dynamics of these annotations. I can put little red flags. Here's where the customer got upset. Here's where they confirmed the sale. Here's where they gave me the shipping address. Put those little moments of the conversation in text form. But how I prefer to use those annotations are for periods of time. So if you left click and drag inside of the timeline of the call, nothing too fancy, just a simple left click and drag, You'll notice I highlight a portion of this audio. With that section highlighted, I can click either that pen and paper icon or the add button again to put a new annotation on the recording. This time we'll use the pen and paper just to show it does the same thing. But instead of putting a note on a moment of the call, I'm now putting a note on a period of the call. From 3 minutes to 4 minutes and 27 seconds, I'm going to tell the boss, this is where you need to listen here. And I can leave it just that simple. Go ahead and hit save. I've now put that note on this recording. So if I share the call over to the boss, a function that I'm going to show you here in just a few moments, he or she's going to know what to do. Oh, I know. Eric wants me to listen to this moment of the recording. They can highlight that portion of the call, click play, and immediately start playing back just that section of the recording. They can even read the extra gobbledygook if I had attached any, and they could see what I had written about that section of the call. Now, this only happens to be a little over a five minute conversation, but if the call had been 45 minutes and there's only three or four minutes that I really need to draw the attention of my boss to, I can share just that section of the call, let them listen to that portion, get them back onto what they do best. I don't need them listening to the 45 minute long conversation, just catch that snippet that's going to be of particular interest. We use this for productivity all the time. If somebody places an order, I don't need to type into an email the logistics of that order. Here's where they ordered a thousand widgets, send to one, two, three, fake street via expedited postage. I can instead highlight the section of the recording with the order, send it over to order fulfillment, get that information accurately and quickly into the hands of the right people. I'm not going to mess anything up by typing up an email and transposing characters or digits or addresses. And I can focus on what I need to do best. Let the order fulfillment team hear it right from the horse's mouth, get that information quickly and accurately so that they can fulfill the order. Lots of productivity that can happen on these annotations by way of just passing your recordings to and from your various colleagues. So thus far we can search for a call, you can store it, you can see it, listen to it, maybe even put a note on there. Now has come the time that we want to get this call over to somebody else. So we want to share the recording, the last major topic that I have for you in this basic user class. Well, there are quite a few ways that you can share a call to someone else. And getting into that topic, I want to present to you one of those ways, which is simply by right clicking on the recording. Now, when you come up to the little grid and right click on a call, you'll notice that we get a whole menu of options displayed. Sharing is the one that I really wanted us to clean up here at the end of the course, but because we'll never come back to this right click menu, let me take a couple moments to just explain to you these other things that we can do upon right clicking on a recording. First and foremost, you get the option to remove a call from a folder. So if I was in my important folder and I realized three months down the road that this call really isn't important at all, I can get it out of my important folder so it's no longer cluttering up that space. Unorganizing my recordings, if you will. Delete permanently, not a permission that's given out too lightly. This is the ability to do exactly what it says. Delete the call for all time for everyone. It doesn't just delete the call from your own interface. It goes back to the server and deletes the call off of the hard drive. It will never again be found by anyone. Not many people get this permission. If you do have it, don't use it lightly because you'll never find that recording again. 
set expiration date, almost the opposite. I can mark a call as particularly important. So if I think this call might come back to haunt me, I can tell the system to keep it in there until the year 3000 and it would override any backup or archive settings and it would keep the call active on the hard drive of the server for whatever date that I post. A nice way to ensure that that recording will always be there for my records. Sharing is the one I really want to focus on, but we'll come back to it in just a moment. Export to a CSV file. That's going to export all of your call data, this grid of information, to a comma-separated value file. It essentially looks and feels just like an Excel spreadsheet. So if you ever want to work with the data about your recordings, the durations, the directions, the outside names, the outside numbers, we can get all that information into a cut and pasteable format. It's called a CSV file where you can play around with all that information. If you're someone who likes to make custom reports, that might be really up your alley. A really big one, export audio to disk. This is your ability to convert your calls to various audio formats. Things like MP3s or dot waves. If you want your calls in a format that you can attach to an email, burn to a CD, put on your MP3 player, or post to YouTube, if you have the export audio to disk option, you can do just that. You can turn our proprietary coded calls into a more universal format and save them wherever you'd like. Put them on your desktop as MP3s, put them to a network storage as a dot wave. Once they've been converted, they're yours to do with as you will. Attach them to emails, burn them to CDs. We don't care. Those are your audio recordings. Do with them what you will. Verify signatures. Another really big one. This is here in case, heaven forbid, you find yourself on the defense stand. You need to prove to the judge, jury, and lawyers that this is the original call you had with your customer. Yes, they did order those thousand widgets. I am going to hold them to that order. What we do is at the end of every single one of your recordings, put on a digital watermark. We can then verify that that recording has or has not ever been tampered with. Assuming that you haven't tampered with the call, we haven't tried to change a yes to a no or dork with it in any way, shape, or form, when you go to the court, we can prove the validity of the recording by verifying that digital watermark. Thus, your recording holds up in court, you win your case, and life is good. That's come in handy for lots of our customers, as I'm sure you can probably imagine. Multi-call playback is another neat feature wherein you can play back multiple recordings at the same time. Let me show you how this one works. If you highlight several different recordings by holding down Control or Shift, I can get a bunch of calls loaded up, right-click, and choose multi-call playback. Then what it'll do is give me a true time lapse of exactly what happened and when those calls took place in relation to one another. Oftentimes, this is referred to as event recreation, used by 911 dispatch, police, ambulance, and things of that nature. I can see where one call came in from the first witness, the second witness called in, and then finally we got a call from the victim his or herself. Maybe I would also see where I dispatched the police or ambulance to the scene, and I can play back all of those recordings in harmony, and I can see how they played off of one another. Were we as efficient as we possibly could have been about this scenario? If you're not in an industry that needs event recreation, this is just a really great way to play back multiple calls at the same time. I can play one call through my left speaker, I can play another one through my right speaker, I can toggle the volumes, and I can hear several calls at the same time. It's very intelligible, it's surprisingly intelligible, when you put one call through the left and another through the right, how you can make out what's happening on both recordings and be extra efficient. We also get all your full play controls in here. You can control the speed of the playback, and if important to you, a new feature in version 7 and beyond is spoken time overlay, where I can set an option to give me an actual audio indication of the exact time that this was happening during the call. Also helpful for those defense stand scenarios. If that feature of multi-call playback would be interesting to you, that's something that you can configure in your preferences. So if you go to config and then go to preferences out of your management studio, there's an option where in historical calls you can view the multi-call player spoken time overlay. If you enable this feature, we can have an audio presence tell us the exact time of day as the calls are taking place in intervals of seconds, from intervals of 5 seconds to 350 seconds. 
So if we type in some number here, let's say 60 seconds, once every minute, they're going to tell me the exact time of day. I can go ahead and hit OK. And having enabled that feature, when I turn on multi-call playback, I will now get that spoken time overlay available. As I'm playing back the audio of the calls, I can go ahead and click on this little time and it would start speaking to me and telling me the exact time as the calls play back. I can even then adjust the volume of the playback of that spoken time overlay if I need to be able to hear it louder or softer. So that's one neat little feature, the spoken time overlay that's been added to the multi-call playback in version 7.0 and beyond. So getting back to the ultimate topic of interest here, Let's right click and say we want to share this call with somebody else. We've taken a look at all the nice bells and whistles that complement the recording, but now we just need to pass this call over to somebody else of interest, a manager, a supervisor, maybe even that person on the outside world that would like to verify they did in fact order those thousand widgets. If we come to the sharing option, go to create and manage shares, we will get a very intuitive window that pops up. And here's where I can start passing that call to people on the outside world. The first thing that I would do in this window is I would search for the individual to have maybe already been created in the software. So this top table are all the current users, whether they're internal employees or external people that have previously been shared with inside of my organization. If I wanted to share this call with Elwood, I would find that individual from the grid, I would kick him down to this lower share with window, and I could now pass this recording over to his profile. I also get some sharing options at the bottom of the screen. How long do I want Elwood to listen? Elwood, if you don't help me out by tomorrow, I tell you what, I won't need your assistance anymore, so thank you very much and have a nice day. Or I can allow him to continually have access to this recording if I'm in no particular hurry for him to listen to this call. This can be very helpful when you're sharing calls to outside customers. You might not want them to have access to the recording for all time, Let's give them a 24 hour window, listen to, review the recording, then I'm going to take that back and move on to bigger and better things. I can also allow this person to further share the document or keep it just between us. If I didn't want Elwood passing it on to other people, I could restrict that. If I didn't mind and figured he's a very resourceful guy, maybe he knows somebody else that can answer the question, I can allow him to further share this call on to anybody else that he might want to share the recording to. Next option here, I can have him work with my annotations. So if I want him to see the notes and be able to work with the annotations or text that I've put onto the recording, I can grant him permission to do just that. I can allow him to see the annotations. So if I've put some on there that I want him to be able to review, but I don't really want him editing them or changing them, I can kind of set those levels of permissions. Or if I've used some frank four letter words and I don't really want him to see those annotations at all, I can completely hide the annotations. And last but not least here, if I did coaching, this is a feature of the Tracer software with that desktop client capability, and I was chatting the person through the call, I can allow them to see those coaching notes that were attached to the recording so that they can review the conversation that happened between supervisor and employee during the life of that call while it happened in real time. So those are some various preferences that I can set to pass this recording over to the individual and have them use the functionality that I want them to have with this particular recording. If I go ahead and hit OK, that would then execute the share and pass it over to the individual. It would appear in my calls I shared folder. It would appear in his call shared to me folder. That share would have been executed. The calls brought to Elwood's attention. He can now work with and listen to the recording. But let's say I want to share it with somebody who's not a user. I need to share this call with Bob the Builder. And I peruse all my different people, and Bob the Builder is, lo and behold, not a user of my software. So I need to share it with a customer for the very first time on the outside world. Well, what I can do, if permissions have been granted appropriately, is click this New button over here to the right. When I click the New button, it'll pop a window and ask me who I want to share this with. Now in this case, we'll keep it kid friendly, I want to share the call with Bob the Builder. And Bob the Builder just happens to conveniently be at AOL.com. Go ahead and hit OK, and I can create him a temporary profile in my software. Now what happens if I choose to share this call to Bob at AOL.com is this. My system would generate an email, something to this effect. 
Hey Bob, Eric at Oasis wants to share a call with you. If you want to listen to this recording, click on this big old URL and you'll start streaming the audio from his server. Bob in the email will get just that, a big hyperlink encrypted URL. He clicks on that link, he would be able to start streaming the audio from my server to himself wherever in the world that he might be. If it's the first time I ever shared a call with Bob, he would first be prompted to download a little player, a player that's going to decipher that encrypted audio when it gets sent to his PC. On any subsequent time he receives an email or any subsequent time he clicks on the same link, that player would already be installed, it would pop the player and immediately start streaming him the audio of the call. But the greatest part about this is we're not sending him a WAV file. We're not sending him an MP3 that he can keep for all time and manipulate and post on YouTube and do with what he will. Instead, we're sending him streaming technology, a link to the recording that we control. And we can tell exactly how long we control it. Hey, Bob, I'm not going to let you listen to this call beyond Wednesday, so listen to it as many times as you can in the next 48 hours, and that's all you get. At that point, the link would still be in the email. It just doesn't do him any good. When he clicks on the link, it takes him nowhere. He no longer has access to stream or listen to that recording. So you're in control of the call the entire time. Those then are a couple ways that you can share the call, either to somebody internally or somebody externally. But by right clicking on the call and choosing sharing, you're passing over that entire recording to that recipient. The question then often arises, well, what happens if I don't want to share the entire call? What if I only want to share a snippet of the audio? I only want to share with Bob the portion where he says, yes, send me a thousand widgets via expedited postage, and here's my credit card number. Well, we do have some ways to break up these conversations and choose to share just those segments of interest. Here's how that's done. If you left click and drag inside the timeline of the call, notice again I'm highlighting a portion of the audio. Well, the last three icons I really want to show with you today are these three right here. These are used for segmented sharing of the call. So if I click the little person icon, that pops up the exact same share window we were just looking at. It's just that the recipient's only going to be able to listen to that highlighted portion of the call. They wouldn't be able to listen to anything else. The erase icon would clear off any highlighted sections and the padlock, just to show you the full functionality, allows me to lock in multiple sections. So I can lock in a little bit of the beginning, give them a little bit of the middle here, and how about a minute or so at the very tail end? Now when I click that share button, I'm once again only sharing those three highlighted portions of the call. So I see customers use this feature all the time to highlight the beginning of the recording, lock it in, highlight the end of the call, and now when I click share, I'm sharing everything except for the credit card number, the social security number, the medical condition, or whatever piece of proprietary information I really need to keep tucked away and not let float out in cyberspace. So you can get really restrictive from what you want people to have access to and what you would just assume they not be able to listen to. So that's those three extra icons, highlight a portion of the call, share out just a segment of the audio, whether that's to somebody internally or to that person on the outside world that might want to listen to that portion of the call. And last but not least, taking us full circle, there is one other method of sharing, and that is to share an entire folder of recordings with somebody else of interest. This takes us back to the discussion of folder shared to me, kind of getting back to this folder tree system we looked at earlier. Now, if I have been organizing calls into folders, what I might want to do is share recordings with somebody else who wants to listen to the calls that are contained in that folder. So, the example earlier of this upset customer calls folder. Let's say the boss wants to listen to these recordings, but doesn't want to do so from my office. Would just as soon do so from his or her comfy office chair. Makes good sense to me. I can choose to right click on that folder and share the entire folder of calls that I've organized to a specific individual. In this case, let's go ahead and share those folders with myself. I'm going to peruse down here to Eric. I'm going to find myself, kick me down to the share window, and I get a couple extra options. I can allow this recipient to remove and also add calls to this folder. And I can choose to share this with as many people as I want. Myself, Bob, Betty, Jill, Steve, and Tyler. Go ahead and hit OK. 
and it will execute the share of that folder to all the recipients that I've chosen. What that looks like to those who receive it, they will now have a folder shared to me. They're going to see that Eric, my user profile, shared them a folder, and that folder is called Upset Customer Calls. They click on the folder, they will see the calls that I've put into that folder. The greatest part is they can contribute to the folder. They can take away from the folder. It's now one central repository of recordings that we can all take from, we can all contribute to. So if they think a call is not really an upset customer, they can dump it out of there. If they find another truly upset customer call, they can contribute it to the mix. If we were all looking for excellent customer service examples or terrible training examples, we can find all those calls and have them mutually accessible. Work with a group of lawyers the other day that love this feature. Any given case has five lawyers, six assistants, and 30 interns. So as they're working on the case, a call comes in that's pertinent. I can drag and drop that call to the Jones case folder, and everybody working on the Jones case can quickly and easily have access to all the recordings that are pertinent to the case. So anywhere that there's boundary spanning, or project teams, or groups of any sort, this shared folder functionality is a really neat way to make sure we're all working from the same batch of recordings. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that then does it for our basic user training class. In conjunction with that desktop client, that's our management studio. That's the full functionality that an everyday user of the Oasis system is generally given the ability to work with. Thank you very much for participating in our basic user class. If you have any questions about any of the functionality that was presented, please feel free to visit our website at www.oasis.com for further information or call into our main line at 888-496-9040 and talk to any member of the training, tech support, or sales team. Thank you very much and have a great day.